circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. Phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, the warning. What happened? I don't know. It was a voice. I was lying here in bed, half asleep. When the clock began striking midnight, a voice spoke to me. Oh, Charles, what was it? It sounded like my brother Tom. Oh, my darling, it was only a dream, and it frightened you, that's all. Oh, but the voice said, Oh, Charles, don't leave Swansea. Hester, you're almost hysterical. (laughs) But this was a warning. He said that you, Charles, must not go to the house of Waverley. Waverley, what house is that? Well, it isn't one of our properties, at least. Charles, that note... That invitation from John Galton. He lives at a place called Waverley. That's right, now that you mention it. And the voice said that Waverley is death and sorrow. It was my brother Tom, I know it was. And he's warning us. Charles, don't go tonight. Promise me you won't go now. But, darling, the reason I'm going is to find out what happened to your brother. It's after midnight already. I should have gone an hour ago. My brother's dead. I know it now. Secretly, you know it too. Yes. Well, somehow we would have heard where he is. A man like Tom just doesn't disappear. Oh, Charles, I'm frightened. When you go, I'll be here alone and afraid for you. No, Hester, I'll be all right. We thought Tom would be all right, too, when he went to collect the rents. It's so far away, Charles. Oh, 50 miles, that isn't far. Then promise me, promise me you won't go to John Galton's, to this Waverley promise. All right, Hester. But after all, John's an old friend, a schoolmate, in fact. I promise, though. Now, you feel better? A little, I suppose. (laughs) Then go to sleep. And I'll also promise to be back safe and sound within a fortnight. There. A kiss for the prettiest wife in Swansea. Goodbye. Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Aye, sir. I remember him well, Mr. Hargreaves. Thomas Shawcott, he said his name was. You say he's your wife's brother. Aye, he came to the farm here about a year ago, asked after all of us, and then went on to the manor house to collect the rent monies. You say he never returned to Swansea? I'm afraid not, my man. You see, my wife and I were away on a long honeymoon, and we didn't know of her brother's disappearance until we came back. Highwaymen, most probably. I'm sorry to hear of it. Well, thanks for your help, anyhow. I'll be on my way. I want to get to the manor house by nightfall. Get up there. See you about this time next year. I sir. Thank you, Mr. Hargreaves. Good luck to you. Well, sir, I do recollect him. Yes, sir, I do. Fine young chap he was. Stopped here at the inn about this time of night, about ten o'clock, and took my best room. Then off he went the next morning, chipper as the dawn. Well, I left Swansea two days ago, and I have traced him this far. It's the last stop. North of here is Sir Granville's estates. By George, I do recollect something the young chap said now that you bring him to mind, Mr. Hargreaves. Well, what is it, Hobbs? Why, he had an invitation to visit some friend or other, he did, sir. Said he was off for a bit of a holiday before going back to Swansea. Invitation? From whom? Well, that he didn't say, sir. 
by George. What is it, Hobbs? That's a funny thing. Now I recollect it. Didn't think much about it at the time. What? Your Mr. Charkett asked after the way to get there, he did. I recollect it particularly because Elsie, my dear dead wife, sir, God bless her soul, Elsie was born a few miles from there. From where? A great big house, empty for as long as I can remember. Never thought anyone lived there at all. Waverley it is. That's it. Name of Waverley. Waverley? Suppose you might inquire, find out where he went from there. Yes, you're right, Hobbs. Do you suppose the lad was murdered somewhere on the road, murdered and robbed of his rent monies? I don't know, but I intend to find out. Thanks for all you've said. It's been of great help. Now, I think I'll go to bed. Oh, of course, of course. The first floor room's quite ready. I'll take your portmanteau. This way, Mr. Hargreaves. Mr. Hargreaves, sir. Mr. Hargreaves. What is it, Hobbs? I'm sorry to wake you, sir, but there's a lady here. Says she's Mrs. Hargreaves. Of course I am. Charles, it's Hester. Hester? For, for heaven's sakes, what are you doing here? I had to come, Charles, after what's happened. I couldn't stay at Swansea another minute. Will there be anything you'll want, sir? Innkeeper, tell the driver I shan't need him any longer. He might want to stay the night here. The sky's most threatening. I'll see to him, ma'am. Uh, good night. Whatever happened to make you come all the way from Swansea? Oh, Charles, I was so worried. You are all right. Of course. Hester, what's the matter, my darling? You look pale and tired. Here, let me light another candle. Charles, last night at midnight, the voice spoke to me again. Is that all? Is that all? Charles, how can I make you understand? I've been most frightened to death. It's not what you think. It's not a dream. Well, what did the voice say? It gave another warning. It said it could only appear to me while the clock struck midnight. And then it said that you were in danger. And that if you went to that place, Waverley, the name is, you'd surely die. Oh, Charles, please, please, for my sake, heed the warning. Is that why you came, then? To tell me this? I had to. Last night I lay awake for hours, wondering if you'd kept your promise not to go to John Galton's. And then suddenly I couldn't bear it any longer. I hired a carriage and followed you. Hester, this is mad. I, I don't understand it. You say this it was voice... Tom, Charles. His ghost. Don't you think I'd recognize my own brother's voice? Oh, my darling, I don't understand it either. All I know is... Hester, that... Tom had an invitation to visit John Galton. Oh? He left the inn here at dawn, I'm told, and went on, presumably, to Waverley. I made inquiries on the road. The place is somewhere beyond the White Forest. It can't be far. Charles... I'm going there, Hester. If Tom's a prisoner, if he's been murdered... Charles, no, no, you mustn't. I won't hear of it. I won't let you go. Nevertheless, I'm going. But Tom is dead. I know he is. You can't help him now. And twice he's warned us, don't you see? For my sake, leave this thing alone. It's beyond our understanding, and no good can come of it. Listen. It's midnight. Charles! Charles, the terrace windows... It's the wind. Blown out the candles. Wait, I'll close it. No! Oh! Oh! Charles, look! Hester, what is it? It's the ghost of Tom. Taking form in the mist. There in the wind. It's disappeared. Close the window, Charles, quickly. There. Here, I'll light the candles again. Now, you've heard the warning yourself. Now you've seen the ghost. You know what I meant. Yes. And there was pain on his misty face. And a dagger in his heart. Charles, if you love me, take me back to Swansea now. I'll never ask anything else of you so long as we live. If you'll only take me back tonight. But, Hester, there's Tom's murder to avenge. Oh, what can that matter now? It's done. And he warns us to leave us alone. Charles, please, heed this warning. Take me back. But I don't understand all this, Hester. Please, please, Charles, take me home. All right. I'll take you home. Hester, this is a crazy thing to do, going out in the night like this. I can barely see the road. But we're on our way, Charles. That's all that matters. If we aren't drowned in a deluge before we get there, we'll be lucky. I've hidden the gold in a box under the baggage, Hester. Charles, 
There's something I want to tell you, something you never knew. What's that? It's John Gelson I'm afraid of. I never told you before, but I've always been afraid of him. Oh, Hester, why? Because long before we were married, he was terribly in love with me. I didn't know it myself until one day he asked me to marry him. Oh, what's frightening about that? It was his manner when I said no. He turned pale and there were tears in his eyes and he said... I'll find a way, Hester. Someday you will be, Mrs. Galton. What happened then? Nothing. Except that for months I suspected him of watching me. Now and again I'd catch a glimpse of him in a crowd. And once I saw him waiting near my father's house. After that I never saw him again. Nor have I, since we left school. Hester, do you suppose... Oh, it's impossible that he could... Charles, look! There's someone on the road. He's hailing us to stop. Charles, no, don't. Get off the road there, man. Move to one side. Look out, we'll hit him. Charles, stop. What's the idea, man? Do you want to be run over? He's coming toward... Oh! Hey, George. Hester. There's a dagger in his heart. He's dead. He's a dead man. Charles, drive on. Come on, get up there. Get up. What's the matter? Why have you stopped? Because there's no use going on like this. The rain, I, I can't even see the road. And this forest. I don't remember this forest at all. I don't either. I've never been here before, Hester. You mean you don't know where we are, Charles? Oh, we'll find our way out. We'd better stay here till daybreak. No, no, let's go on. There must be a farmhouse nearby, somebody to tell us the right road. Charles, let's go on. I suppose you're right. The road leads somewhere. Get up. Hester, is that a light yonder, through the trees? Where? Oh, Charles, it is. Thank heaven, at least we'll find shelter. Here, Hester, stand under the eaves out of the rain. Oh, I'm all right. There's the knocker there, Charles. All right. Hello? Hello? Will you let us in? Hello in there. Good evening, sir. My wife and I... Charles. Good evening, my friends. John Galton. I've been expecting you. Welcome to the house of Waverley. in, my friends, in here before the fire. It will take the chill of the rain and the night from your bones. <laughs> Spot of wine? No, thank you, John. You say you were expecting us? Yes, I was, Charles. Hester, come and sit by the fire. Your frock is damp, I'm afraid. How did you know we would come, John? Because it was the last thing in the world you wanted to do. I think you expected only me. We met one of your... Your men on the road. Oh, yes. I sent him out to make sure you were lost. He's a frightening fellow. I trust the sight of him didn't alarm you too much, Hester. He's a dead man. There was a dagger in his heart. Yes. A most disconcerting thing. What do you want with us? Well, you're my old friends, and this is my house. I would like you to enjoy its hospitality. Then, because we are old friends, John, let us go. I'm afraid here, that man... Oh, but... he won't harm you, my dear, and I wouldn't hear if you're leaving. Jacob! Jacob will show you to one of the sitting rooms upstairs, Hester. There's a fire there. Charles! Look in the doorway. Great Scott! A walking corpse! With a dagger in his heart. Send him away, please! Send him away! Oh, I see our Hester's frightened. Well, she'll grow accustomed to my servants soon. Jacob! Go back! There now. He's gone. John Galton, what kind of a devil are you? What do you want of us? This thing's gone too far. Oh, I see you mistrust me. Or maybe your impatience suggests mistrust. In any case, I gladly tell you, Charles. 
May I suggest the library? It's just yonder beyond those doors. There we'll be alone. And leave Hester here with this place full of devilish monsters? Oh, I assure you she's entirely safe. Will you please forgive us a few minutes' neglect, Hester? Well, if it's necessary, but I do... We shan't be long. Come, Charles. I want to get to the bottom of this thing, Hester. It'll only be a moment. Then we'll be quite ready to go home. All right, Charles, but do hurry back. I promise. John, lead the way. Here. Come and sit in the light of the fire, Charles. There's some excellent wine on the table. No, thank you. As you say, it's my custom to offer a man a glass of wine uh, before he dies. Then you did kill Tom Chocket. He sat there sipping his claret, unsuspecting, even unafraid. No, I did not kill him. You mean he's still alive? He's here? No, he's dead. But his body is here. It serves me well, even as yours will. I knew Tom was robbed and murdered to cover it up. But I had no idea it was you. What's happened to make you like this? The answer's easy. Two things, Charles. Love and the consuming desire to kill. They are strangely akin. I don't know what you're talking about. Hester. I've been in love with her for a long, long time. What's that got to do with it? She told me once that she couldn't marry me. Because I wasn't able to give her everything she acquired for happiness. I was insanely jealous of everyone she knew. Even the places she went. Then, quite suddenly, I saw a way out. What was that? My aunt had died. She was penniless. But she did leave me Waverley. All that was left was the Galton's great name. Suddenly I realized how well it would serve me. So I came here to live alone. I waited, knowing the chance would come. And it did. One night in a blinding storm. I am beginning to see what you mean. Yes. A merchant traveling through the forest road lost his way in the storm. He came to Waverley and I invited him in. He drank too much wine. A knife was handy. I couldn't resist a simple thrust at his heart. And then the gold he carried was mine. Do you know? Before he died, the most extraordinary thing of all happened. Well, what was it? He rose up stiffly from his chair and clung to the mantel. Somehow his fingers touched the stone that moved, and then he fell heavily upon the earth. But the compartment was open, and inside it I could see the silver ring shining in the candlelight. Ring? Yes. A large ring, almost as large as a bracelet. I took it out and, and lettered in silver about it was a rhyme. Listen. These magic words at midnight read make murdered men the living dead. <laughs> you know, even as I spoke, the dead man moved. Slowly he got to his feet and he stood there waiting. I was shaken and cold with fear until I began to know what it meant. The ring, you mean? Yes, the magic ring. For centuries it had lain hidden in the chimney piece. Legend said it was given to one of the first Galtons nearly five centuries ago by a gypsy in return for her life. With it, Charles Hargreaves. I'm the most powerful man in the world. With it, the dead are at my command and the living fear me. It gives me everything in the world I want. It does not give you the right to kill. It gives me the power to control even death itself. Jacob! William! What are you going to do? Our talk is done, Charles. See? See these two men, Charles? They are my slaves. Two men who are dead and yet alive. Jacob! William! See this man! Stay back from me. Yes. Stay back! Strong, Charles. It will be useless to resist. Let go of me. You, let go. It is useless, my friend, to struggle. The hands are like iron. Now you see how powerful the magic ring is. Only once have I killed a man, the first. And since then, the murdered have murdered at my bidding. I'll give you my gold if that's what you want, John. I'll give it to you gladly. But the gold is useless stuff, my friend. Don't you see? I have enough. It is your death I want, Charles. And then your body to serve me, even as these two. <laughs> You're a devil. Once you are gone thought that you will creep from Hester's heart and she'll forget. She'll not forget. Your magic is lost in the living. Do you think she can love you just for the asking? The power of my love is strong enough to win her to me. But I'll grant you this grace, Charles. A last grace. I'll allow you to see her again before you die. Jacob! William! Hold him here. Till the time comes. Where are you going? 
to offer Hester the world if she wants it. To win her. To tell her at last she is mine. John, where is Charles? What have you done to him? He'll be here in a minute or two, Hester. And others, there's no need to be afraid. You've always been a little frightened of me, I think. Yes, I... I've never understood you, John. A woman's always afraid of anything she doesn't understand. My dear, fear is passing. And this will go, believe me. I do believe you. But everything here is so strange. We'll make it right, Hester. What can I do to make it right? Anything you say, I'll do it gladly. Why, thank you, John. Really, I should be ashamed of myself. After all, what is there to be afraid of? You see, already I'm beginning to feel at home. You're still as... as beautiful as ever. Still the Hester I knew years ago. Oh, I, do any of us ever change very much? I've changed. But the change was for you. All for you. Do you like me as I am, Hester? Why, we were friends, John. We were young together. Remember how you used to leave those mysterious notes in the hollow tree near the fountain? I remember I... your father's rich carriages, your beautiful gowns, and how ashamed I was of my poor looks and my clothes. Well, no longer, John. Since then, you've come a long way in the world. Then it pleases you. Oh, how glad I am. This house, it's... It's a luxurious house, Hester, almost worthy of your beauty. Does Waverley please you, too? Why, it's a lovely house, John. I was just thinking, though... What, my dear? Oh, I was thinking how ably it could use a woman's touch. You men. <laughs> when you live alone, you like everything drab and colorless. All of you need someone to take care of you, to fuss over you a little, to keep your clothes neat and keep your shirt collars buttoned. Here, John, let me fasten it for you. Hester, my darling. Is that the keepsake you wear around your neck, John? It's only a silver ring. Oh. Hester, what have you done? Give it back to now me. Now I have your magic ring, John Galton. Hester, give it back. I'm not afraid of you. Now your powers are gone and your murdered men will have to answer to my you command. You listened. You heard everything I told you. Do you think I'd sit meekly by the fire while you arranged to kill my husband? I was outside the door, even when those two monsters came to hold him fast. Hester, I beg of you, please give it back. John Galton, you killed my brother, who came here as a friend. You murdered my brother, Tom. Tom! With these Tom. hands, I've killed Tom. only one man, Hester. The second time is easier. And to kill one I love would be easier still. Give me back the ring. Tom! Oh, Tom. You've come. For months I've waited in torment for such a night as this, John Galton. As a ghost, I could never harm you. But now your strength is gone with the ring. Don't come near me. Stay back. Stay back. I have been carrying this dagger in my heart for one reason. To raise it above your chest and set it deep in your heart. Hester. Hester, stop him. Tom. Tom, he's running away out the terrace doors. He cannot escape. The magic of the ring you hold is too great. The ring. For my sake, Hester, study the ring. It has more power than you know. Tom! Tom, come back! Let him go! Oh, Tom, come back! Come back! Charles! Charles, help me! Hester! Let me go, you demons! Let me go! Charles! Charles! Hester! Let go of him, you fiends! Jacob! William, let him go! Hester, what is this? They obeyed you. They're gone. I have the magic ring, Charles. I took it from John. Quick, Tom will murder him. Help me stop him quickly. Where did they go? Out there. Out the terrace doors. Come along. I heard you calling after Tom, but I couldn't get away from those devils. Tom took the knife from his heart, and John fled. Tom wouldn't obey me, Charles. Oh, there was such revenge in his dead eyes. Here, the terrace doors. Look, the storm's over. Daylight's coming. Where did they go? Oh, Charles. Oh, we're too late. Yes, yonder on the terrace, he's plunged the knife in John's heart. Look at Tom, how still he stands. Tom said for his sake to study the ring. Look, Charles, the inscription here. These magic words... Don't read them. They bring back the dead. Well, what did he mean? Look, there, on the inside. You see? There's, there's something written in there. Another inscription. Here... 
Here, let me hold it up to the light. Oh, here it is. At break of day, this magic key makes dust of flesh, sets phantoms free. Esther, look. Tom's body. It crumbled. It, it crumbled into dust. The words, the magic ring. Now the murdered men are prisoners no longer. Their bodies have sunk into dust. Give me the ring. Oh, what a terrible charm it is. We must destroy the ring, Charles. You're right, Hester. It must be destroyed. So we can never harm anyone again. We'll take the ring and throw it into the sea. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, The Warning. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Thank you.